Welcome in to Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. People say I am the best boss. They go, God, we've never worked in a place like this before. You're hilarious. Use weather, sports, and of course, all the local info you need to start your day. I think that pretty much sums it up. Yeah! Talk of the Town live on 103.7 WTIB and 94.1 WNBU. What? Cable 7 in Greenville and worldwide at WTIBFM.com. What? Now here's the host for Talk of the Town. Yes. Henry Hinton. All right, 71 degrees already this morning, and we're going to a high of 76 today. We do have some uh, rough weather coming, though. We got wind and rain Moving in mid-afternoon, going to change things, and temperatures tonight back down to the 30s. Woo! Hard to believe, isn't it? Going to be uh, going to be kind of a rough night, but uh, we got baseball again tonight. Hopefully, they can get it in. We'll see. 6:30 uh, first pitch with Wofford at Clark LeClaire tonight. Pirates now with uh, is it 21 wins? 21 and six. Yep. 21 wins after Not the win bad. last night Not over bad. UNC Wilmington. Was, the balls were flying out of the ballpark last night, weren't they? Yes. Like four home runs in the first mm-hmm. three or four innings? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, my grandson even got a foul ball. Nice. He was cool. very excited. Very cool. excited. Trent McGee is here this morning. Good to see you, McGee. Good morning. Good morning. Good to and, be here. And um, Billy Weaver from WITN, two days this week. What a what a treat. <laughs> Wake up, Weaver. Uh, that's really, that's really kind of, I'm that's, awake. I'm awake. That's I'm really kind of how good. I felt about it. But good. I'm trying good. to be nice. Already, no, that's just how I feel. 71 degrees. You know, I do too. I It's it's when the I, pollen. When I go out and do something like, you know, we so we left the ballpark last night about 8:45. I was I made my grandson leave because I'm like, you know, I hey, let's go. Pop pops. Oh, he's got to go home. <laughs> I got I got to get I got to get up at 5. So I went home and I watched the end of the game on uh on my iPad. And I was stimulated and I couldn't go to sleep. <laughs> So I rolled and tumbled till about ten thirty, to maybe eleven o'clock before I ever went to sleep. And so I, you know, I'm I'm bleary eyed this morning. You want to hear? You want to hear more of my problems? I don't want to hear about you, know you being I, stimulated. I my left knee hurts. Don't want yeah. to hear about your we, stimulation. Yeah. Back in Especially my day, just before bed, we don't want to hear about your stimulation. See, here's the other thing. Uh, you know. You want to hear about my all my old man problems? <laughs> Not late at night. Hey, no, I got a, I got news for both of you. Shut <laughs> up! You guys making fun of me? Uh, you're gonna get there one day. Eight minutes after. <laughs> eight minutes yeah, after McGee, eight. you're gonna be old and stimulated you know, one of these days. If, it, if if I get to that age and only was you, were you based, laughing because I said I was stimulated? If that's yes. the only thing at that age <laughs> that is stimulating. Then I am not looking forward to being in my 60s. Listen, when you get stimulated in your 60s, it's a big deal. <laughs> my college baseball. I got this for it. And you know what stimulates you when you get in this age? Baseball. That's what stimulates you. Oh, uh, speaking of having – I had I, – look, my wife had to punch me this morning because I, I literally – the alarm went off for 15 minutes and I never heard it. So that's how – Mm-hmm. I got into those deep REMs, man. I was into the deep REMs. But did you have trouble as a kid waking up, or do you have trouble getting your kids up in the morning? I used to. Weaver? Yeah. You did? Well, when my kids were at home to have to get them up, so they were out of the house so now. So what, what method did you use? You know, you know what my dad used to do when I wouldn't get out of bed? He would just come crawl on the bed and just put me in a bear hug. And, not let, and, my, and my dad was huge. My dad was like 6'3". He was built like a brick house. He would get on top of me and just wrap his arms around me and not let me move. He said, you don't want to get up? You don't want to get up? Okay, fine. You're not going to get up. And I was – You're I not going to move. I mean, it would be like I was in a tight j- – he would just lay on top of me. It, and I'm telling you, he was a big man. And and that's how he would and – I, and I would be fighting and scratching trying to get out of there, kind of like John Thompson. Remember that, McGee? <laughs> fighting and scratching and kicking. I do, I do remember one time. Clawing. <laughs> I remember one time I was sleeping and uh, I would not get up for my dad. Yeah. And he tried a couple of times. He said, okay. So he went into the kitchen and he brought out all the pots and pans and started banging them (laughs) together. And you talk about loud. Yeah. That's annoying. Yeah. I was up pretty quick. Well, here, how about this? What, you know, is this wrong? A woman was arrested in Phoenix yesterday because her son wouldn't get out of bed for church on Easter morning. 
and she tased him. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know why we're laughing. That ain't funny. Uh, now, she's claiming she didn't tase him, but the kid <laughs> called 911 and said, my mom just tased me. And the cops came, and they saw marks on him where he'd been tased. Oh, my gosh. She was on the news last night in Phoenix. Here we go. Michael, can we turn this up, please? Okay, why is it not playing? <laughs> Someone tased her. She's down. Are you sure it's up? Wow. All that set up, and we didn't get it on. How can that not be? Henry, you're having computer issues this morning. Having some computer issues. All right, hang on. Let's try it now. All right, here we go. Here's what she said to the cops. I said, get up. It's Jesus' day. I don't think I did anything wrong because you're supposed to put God first. And that's all I was trying to tell my kids, put God first. He was like, Mom, I'm calling the police. I said, you can call police, UPS, DPS, whoever you want to call. <laughs> police were on the phone, and I told the dispatcher, I told her, I said, you need to be with Jesus right now. Did you tase your son? No, I made, uh, I made the noise with the taser. But I did not taste my son. Nobody writes a book on the correct way of parenting. I told my sons this, honor thy mother, thy father, or the days will be shortened. That's my favorite. <laughs> Is that in well, the Bible? She was trying to shorten his yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. She was trying to shorten his day. Honor right. thy father and their mother, or your days will be shortened? I she mean, just made the noise. I don't remember God ever threatening people like that. She but. said, put Jesus first, or the lightning bolts will come down <laughs> on you. I don't care if you call the police, you know, UPS, DPS. So she walked into his room with a taser and went, In the name of Jesus, I'm going to tase you. <laughs> <laughs> Those interviews after she situations tased like him that. in the name of Jesus. I don't think that's what Jesus had in mind about, no, uh, about no, parenting. That's your not really putting Jesus first or God And then first. she lied to the cops about it and said she made the sound. She made the, she, she made the sound. <laughs> <laughs> so those marks on his leg. Yeah. Those. Yeah. those <laughs> That came from the sound. Mm -hmm. <sighs> People, don't tase your children. <laughs> no, that's not smart to do. <laughs> don't tase your children. Oh, my goodness. Uh, let's see. What else we got? <laughs> <laughs> Bang some pots and pans. Throw hey, water use on the them bear or hug something. Method, or, like in yeah, bear hug them. Don't tase yeah, them. Don't, don't tase, tase your kids. Don't tase them. So have you ever thought about when you're talking to somebody on your cell phone? Because, you know, that's going through the air. It's going through the air, hitting the cell. You ever thought, I wonder if somebody's listening to my call? Well, anything in the airwaves could be intercepted, potentially. Well, the U.S. government has now acknowledged the existence in Washington, D.C. of what appears to be devices that track individual cell phones and intercept calls and messages, according to the Associated Press this morning. Yeah, yeah, believe that. In a March 26 letter to Senator Ron Wyden, a Democrat from Oregon, the Department of Homeland Security admitted that it has observed anomalous activity. McGee, anomalous, Google. Ooh. What does anomalous mean? That's a good one. Anomalous activity in the Washington, D.C. area that appears to be consistent with international mobile subscriber identity catchers, MSIs. You know what an MSI is? A mobile su subscriber identity <laughs> oh. catcher. Department of Homeland Security added that it has not determined the type of devices in use or who might have been operating them, nor did it say how many if it detected or where. So they're in Washington, D.C. So here's the question. Is it Putin again? Putin put these um, MSIs on cell phone towers in Washington, D.C., and, you know, is... Um, is, are they listening to Trump's cell phone calls? Hmm. And does Trump use, I mean, does the president of the United States use a cell phone, you think? You would think so, I would yeah. Think so, yeah. But, I mean, it can be captured. He, how do you think he tweets Michael so think, Michael quickly. was shaking no. You don't think so, Michael? No, I would assume all his communications are very secure. I don't know. He, yeah, like those tweets? What does he tweet from his iP <laughs> an iPad? No, no, no. That's different. He's about, what do you mean it's different? That's him. That's, no, I think no, no, no. I'm not the so tweets. Good. I'm talking about communications like from him to the Senate or from him to somebody else. Like from him to Stormy Daniels? Right, from yeah. him to Stormy <laughs> Daniels. That's not done by cell phone. <laughs> those, kind of, those kind of things are secure is what you're saying. That is correct. But it does bring to mind again, you know, all this technology. You know, we're finding out Facebook is spying on us. Now, you know, your cell phones aren't secure. You thought they were. 
Somebody's listening to all your calls, reading all your texts. I think the better they get and the more technology expands, I think the better chance that those devices become, you know, more open in that regard in terms of those companies being able to use them for things like that, spying, listening in. So as it gets better and better and better, we think it is, it's also getting better for them, too, to do stuff like that. So keep that in mind. I don't know. Anomalous, deviating from the norm. Just so you know, atypical, abnormal. But it just it just shows that all this technology has put us in some danger. Yes, it has. It has. No question about that. I, you know, I, 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 I don't, I don't want them targeting me with uh, ads and stuff like that. I don't want. Well, oh, that. that's happening. Oh, I know it. Absolutely happening. But, but you know that guy that owns uh, Facebook, Zuckerberg. He's a schmuck. He's lying. Schmuckerberg. About it. Schmuckerberg, he's lying about it all. Not telling the truth. All right, meanwhile, back here in North Carolina, remember back in, um, remember when Roy Cooper first ran for attorney general, Michael? And he ran against this guy who was a lawyer in Raleigh by the name of Boyce. Um, so law, this guy was a lawyer in Raleigh. His name was Boyce. He ran against Roy Cooper for attorney general in 2000, okay? During the campaign, Roy Cooper ran some TV ads that this Boyce guy said were lies about him. I can't remember exactly what he said about it, but he said some things about this Boyce guy that the Boyce guy said, you know, this guy's lying about me. And so, you know, it's not it's not unusual for one campaign, uh, for one one candidate to lie about the other guy. But whatever it was, I can't. Anybody remember what it was? Call us and tell us five six one eight two five five. What was it that Cooper said about this guy? But Cooper, you know, said you know that we're standing by the story, and as it turned out, the story wasn't true. At the end of the day, it wasn't true. But by the time it had been determined that it wasn't true, Cooper had won the election and he had become attorney general. So this is your governor now. This is how he got on the road to becoming governor. So this guy, Boyce, sued Roy Cooper and won. <laughs> it took years to get it through the courts. But it went through state and federal courts, took more than a decade, reading the News Observer this morning, until the Boyce family and Cooper brokered a settlement in 2014 that led to an apology from Cooper to Boyce and an, agreer, an agreement that he pay $75,000 in legal costs to the Boyce family. So Cooper finally admitted, okay, you know, there's probably some document somewhere that says, I'm not admitting that I'm uh, wrong, but I'm not admitting that I was guilty, but I'm going to pay you $75,000. So after that happened, the Boyce guy went to the state bar in North Carolina and said, you know what? I think that Cooper should be disbarred. I think you should hear this. I think there should be a hearing, and uh, Roy Cooper should lose his law license for lying like this. The state bar said, no, we're not going to hear The guy's the attorney general. We're not going to hear it. And so Boyce sued the North Carolina state bar saying, wait a minute, this is an inside job. The courts have determined this guy's guilty. He's paid me $75,000. He's the attorney general. I think that the state bar should disbar him or at least have a hearing about it. State bar said no. So Boyce sued the state bar. Last year, it took all the way to last year for it to go to Wake County Superior Court, and Don Stevens, the judge in Superior Court, ruled against Boyce. All right, why am I talking about it this morning? Yesterday, the State Court of Appeals came back and said, you win your case, or at least you get your case needs to be hear, heard. In a unanimous decision that upheld two parts of Stevens' three-prong ruling, A three-judge panel sent the case back to the trial court for further proceedings. And by the way, there were uh, there were there, there was one of the three judges on the court of appeals was a Democrat, 
Wanda Bryant. The other ones were Robert Hunter and Richard Dietz. They were Republicans. They agreed with Boyce that North Carolina courts should be called on to investigate a lawyer if the state bar has a conflict of interest. The panel also agreed with the Superior Court judge that Boyce does not have a standing to bring the claims he did against the bar, nor could he show that he'd been harmed. So he got kind of a split ruling. They're basically saying we're going we're gonna to remand it back to the court, to remand it back to the... Um, uh, to the trial court, but we're not saying that you were harmed in any way. So, um, one of the uh, one of one of uh, Cooper's strategists has released a statement. This, this is a political battle that's over. But instead of letting it go, they're taking up the court's time and money to settle an old score that's already been settled. Well, at least they admit it's been settled, and Cooper lost the case, $75,000 worth. But I, I just think it's interesting. I, I do think it's interesting that – does anybody remember what it was that Cooper said about the guy? Can't, Google that, McGee. What did Roy Cooper say to libel Boyce in the attorney general election in 2000 in North Carolina? Is that too long to Google? I can't remember what it was. What Cooper. year was it again? 2000. Mm -hmm. Yep. Did anything come up? <coughs> Google. McGee yeah. is now Googling. What does it say? What, is it, what did uh, Cooper do? I'm having, to, I'm having to read it. Give me a second. Oh, here's, here's uh, somebody, just, uh, somebody just sent me this. It says the commercial said that, that the lawyer boys had charged – $28,000 an hour to represent taxpayers in a lawsuit against the state. And uh, that was found not to be true. This, by the way, this message that I just got came from somebody in, in Charlotte. Who, who sent me this? Text, I'm getting all these messages this morning. This is a 704 number. Who are you? Who are you? Tell me who you what are. What are you doing here? <laughs> What do you want with me? <laughs> Tell me who you are. All right, eight twenty-two. So yeah, but it turned out not to be true. He did not do that, and yeah. so they um, and, and so boy sued him and, and won the case. Twenty-two minutes after uh, eight o'clock. It's imagine imagine that uh, the Democrats in Raleigh saying anything they have to say just to get elected. Never heard them do that before. HB two, HB two, HB two. We'll be right back. Cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamston, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. If you're a conservative, the choice for Congress is crystal clear. A career Washington lobbyist, Scott Dacey, admits he didn't vote for Donald Trump in the primary. And there's no evidence he ever supported President Trump until Dacey decided to run for Congress. On the other hand, Walter Jones has been called a key ally of President Trump. And conservative leader Mark Meadows says nobody has fought the Washington establishment harder and longer than Walter Jones. Walter Jones, a leader, not a lobbyist. I'm Walter Jones, and I approve this message. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is the truck dealer in eastern North Carolina. We are overloaded with new Ram trucks, and we've discounted every one of them to move. It's a Ram truck month. Get up to $10,500 in total savings on select 2018 Ram 1500 trucks. Or get 0% financing for 72 months when you buy a new Ram. Also, lease a new Ram truck right now for only $199 per month. Visit us at WashingtonChrysler.com. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Drive a little to save a lot. put towers where most others don't so people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here 
or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamston, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. This is your WITN morning news update on 103.7 WTIB and 94.1 WNBU. Good morning, everyone. It is currently 826, 70 degrees in Greenville. I'm Billy Weaver, and this is a look at your WITN news headlines. Police are investigating an early morning shooting that sent one woman to the hospital. Pitt County Communications confirmed that shooting a shooting took place near the intersection of North Washington Street and Martin Street in Greenville. They say one woman was shot just after midnight. She was taken to Vida Medical Center. There is no word at this time how serious she is injured. We'll update this story on air and online as we learn more. Well, the woman charged in an Easter morning fatal hit and run scheduled to go to court before a judge later this morning. A breakthrough was made in the case after authorities say they were tipped off by a neighbor. That led to the arrest of Cher Nicholson on Tuesday, nearly two days after the deadly crash early Sunday morning. Nicholson is now behind bars in Pitt County Jail, charged with felony hit and run resulting in a death. A person driving by found Taryn Moyer's body along U.S. 264 alternate near Bethel just after 7.30 in the morning. Troopers linked Nicholson to the crime after they say a woman called in with a tip. She said her neighbor's truck matched the description of the car authorities were looking for, which included a missing mirror and a damaged right side of her vehicle. Now, troopers say that was a lucky break in the case, and hit and runs in rural areas can oftentimes be very difficult to solve. We know now the names of those involved in a fatal police shooting that stemmed from a domestic violence call. Greenville police say Officer Antonio Webb responded to Fox Chase Lane, where he ended up fatally shooting Brian Bellamy. Police say Bellamy was armed with a large knife and ignoring commands to drop the weapon. Officers were dispatched on Easter morning after a teen called 911 to say his mother, Lakeisha Johnson, was being stabbed by Bellamy. Police say the two were in a long-term relationship. Johnson is still being treated at Vidant Medical for multiple stab wounds. Officer Webb, who has been with the Greenville Police Department for a little over a year now, has been placed on administrative leave while the SBI investigates the shooting, and that is, of course, standard protocol. Opening statements started Tuesday in the federal trial of former North Carolina televangelist Todd Kuntz. Now, Kuntz is facing charges of failing to pay taxes and filing false tax returns. Kuntz, a so-called prosperity preacher, was known for promising miracles to people who donated to his ministry. CNN affiliate WSOC reports his lavish lifestyle included a million-dollar condo, and that's according to court documents. He also had luxury sports cars titled in his ministry's name. His attorney has said there's no proof that his client is guilty. It is currently 828, 70 degrees in Greenville. I'm Billy Weaver, and that's a look at your WITN news headlines. Mostly cloudy skies for today with scattered showers and storms. Highs reaching into the mid-70s. That rain chance 60% for tonight. Clearing, chilly, and breezy. Lows only in the upper 30s for tonight. For your Thursday, sunshine back in the forecast. Calm skies and calm conditions, I should say, with a high of 59 degrees. Lows around 40 for tomorrow night. And your Friday, 71 degrees for the high, partly sunny skies with lows in the upper 40s. Right now, it's uh, holding steady at 70 degrees in Greenville. 71 right now in New Bern. Ask you a question, McGee. You were in Augusta on Monday. Mm -hmm. Did you hear anybody in the crowd yell "Dilly Dilly"? No, no Dilly Dilly. Can't do that. You get thrown out of there for that. (laughs) Have you heard about this? Dilly Dilly. (laughs) So the Masters is cracking down on drunk people at the Masters. Did you see any drunk people, by the way, while you were there? Uh, I saw a couple. Did you? And believe it or not, uh, one was a female. Were they acting crazy? Mm, can't go to just Augusta talking and get loudly and um, yeah, acting crazy and with pounding beers. I mean, that's they were just he was just pounding drink beers a lot. 
So here's the story this morning out of Augusta. Golfers have been complaining about the increasing amount of heckling where fans try to dis- d- uh, disrupt their game by shouting while they're swinging. Let me I, tell you, they won't be able to get away with that at Augusta. I was going to say, I, can, I don't think you can get away with that anywhere. Can, if, you, they can, if they can find you in the yeah, crowd. Yeah, if they find you, they'll ask you to leave. It's usually drunk people, of course, and it's uh, frowned upon. So security is ramped up uh, this weekend for, at Augusta, at Augusta National. And according to reports, the staff has been given a list of sayings that are prohibited. And one of them is the new Bud Light catchphrase, dilly dilly. So if you yell, dilly dilly, you're gone. That's one thing I noticed, and I don't know how it was, Billy, when you went to Augusta, but the security oh, obviously has has ramped up all over the course. And even before you get into the gates, I mean, they had the sniffing dogs. And I'm talking, there were four or five sniffing dogs in the tunnel, and yeah. then guards with guns by the gates before you walk in. No and then kidding. when you go up further, wow. they're there again. Wow. They're on the course. Now, see, I haven't been there since the late 90s. so That's just the world we different. live in now. Yeah. So, I've never been there. I pointed out earlier. It's, so what? So wonderful. I mean, but you, you can't yell "dilly dilly." I mean, that's no just, "dilly dilly." It's a free country. So what it? if what if I yell "Billy Billy"? That might pass. <laughs> if, if like somebody's on the other Somebody side might of the think door, you hey, who are you? And I'm like, "Billy Billy." I'm Billy Billy. <laughs> <laughs> I get thrown out for that. I'd throw you out for that. Yeah. He'd probably still toss you. Yeah. What else can you not say? You the man, Bubba Booey. <laughs> Bubba Booey. <laughs> <Bubba Bowie. laughs> Can't do it. For folks who don't know what that means, that's a Howard Stern reference. There'll probably be somebody there that yells. Somebody's going to yell it. Somebody's going to do it. <laughs> Just so that there's video that Howard Stern can play on the show Monday yeah. morning. Yep. Baba Booey. Somebody will do it. Wherever you are this weekend, don't say dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. Could be arrested. But and what if, what if you whisper dilly dilly? I say dilly dilly. <laughs> Baba dilly. Booey. It has no dilly it has no dilly. effect. Unless Jim Nance does it. I know. If Jim Nance says, here we are back at the Masters, and someone in the crowd has just yelled, dilly, dilly, dilly and they're dilly. escorting him out of the property at this moment. <laughs> it's an escort like no other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Uh, news and weather service this morning of Tire Realty Group and Property Management. Uh, Tire Realty Group, looking for good salespeople. Thinking about a career change? Call my man Homer at the Tire Realty Group. They will (laughs) hook you up. They've got great opportunities right now because uh, the real estate market is so good in Greenville. And, of course, uh, list your home with the uh, Tire Realty Group, and you get these guarantees. Number one, you get the 99-day guarantee. They guarantee they'll sell it in 99 days, or they will buy it. There are no upfront fees. And you, uh, you will also uh, be allowed to have that one-day listing contract, which will uh, give you no penalty if you cancel the listing agreement. Only firm in town that will do that. Give them a call today, 758-HOME, if you're trying to sell or rent your home. They have a property management division as well, and they'll lease your home for you as well. Tire Realty Group, 99orfree.com is the website, 99orfree.com. And the uh, telephone number, if you want to call them today, 758-H-O-M-E. We're talking the town on the way. Joe Dooley will give an update on the Joe Dooley expectation. And uh, what will Joe Dooley, what will be his first move at ECU? Weaver, are you going to stay for this or are you going to leave us now? Can you stay for one more segment? I want to get your input on this. Okay, sure. I know your mama's waiting for breakfast. Mama, <laughs> Billy's going to be 10 minutes late. We'll be right back. Billy, Billy. Billy, Billy. Billy. It's the Big Zero event at Greenville Toyota. Put zero down on new Toyotas. Corollas, $14,999 or $149 a month. Camrys, $19,999 or $169 a month at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamston, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere.
The OptiFast program at the Vidant Wellness Center is not your typical weight loss program. OptiFast is a safe, professionally supervised meal replacement program combining comprehensive lifestyle changes along with expert counseling and ongoing personalized support. At the end of the 12-week program, I was so happy because I met my goal. I, I lost the 25 pounds that was my target. I dropped two pant sizes. It was simple, shakes bars and food. You do that and the weight starts to come off. The product, it tastes good, it fills you up. So I love that I joined, I love that I met my target. This program is a lifestyle change for me. We're starting the new year with zero down on every vehicle. It's Greenville Toyota's Big Zero event, where you put zero down and make zero first payment or get 0% financing for 60 months. Plus, get our advantage at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. 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 Was that Billy Billy or Dilly Dilly? <laughs> I'll never know the difference now. All right, welcome back. It is uh, 8.37, 23 minutes in front of 9 o'clock. And uh, today at 5 o'clock, the uh, ECU Board of Trustees will meet in the Spillman Building where they have uh, a lot of their uh, trustee uh, meetings. If they're doing a little impromptu meetings, there's a conference room in that building off the uh, Chancellor's office. And uh, I'm, I'm assuming... What they have to do, because I, I know from being on the Board of Governors that what you have to do, you have to send a notice out 48 hours in advance, let the media know you're going to meet, because it's a public board. You go into, uh, they'll go into um, Chairman of the Board, uh, if, if he's there, Kieran Shanahan, whoever's, whoever's presiding will, will have a, uh, a motion uh, to start the meeting. They will, um, they will say hello to each other. They will say the purpose of this meeting is to discuss a personnel matter. And then someone will make a motion to say, Mr. Chairman, I move that we go into closed session to discuss a personnel matter pursuant to whatever that North Carolina state statute is. And they, they'll say what the statute is. And then the chairman will say, Okay, we're now in closed session, and then all the media that's in there, including you, Weaver, will be thrown out. Are you going to be there? I will not. We will have Edward She, one of our reporters over there, because of, with it being five o'clock and having to be on the air at six. So all the so we'll you know, all reporters. the media will go in there just for that fifteen seconds where they open the meeting, and then they're going to get thrown out. Pretty much because they go when you go into closed session, the media has to leave the room, and there's nobody in there but the board and the staff, and uh, maybe the chancellor. <laughs> and um, so um, then they'll, you know, uh, the lawyer for the university probably will um, will go over the contract that um, they've negotiated with Dave Hart. Dave Hart will probably be in that meeting, too, is my guess, wouldn't you think? You would I think, would think so. so, yeah. Um, and um, he'll probably explain to the Board of Trustees kind of how the search went and uh, – I'm thinking they'll be in there probably – there'll be some questions from the board. They'll go over the contract. The meeting, I'm going to say, is going to last probably about 30 minutes. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, 20, 30 minutes. And then, and then uh, somebody will open the door and say, we're back, in, we're back in open session, and the media can come in, and then the board will finish the meeting by saying, uh, that is the end of the meeting. Motion to adjourn. The meeting will end. <laughs> And then everybody would go, what was the meeting about? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, 
And the question is whether or not Joe Dooley will be. Joe Joe will not be in that meeting, is my guess. He, uh, my understanding is he will be in Greenville, but he will not be in that meeting. Yeah, it's it's pretty rare to have, especially when it's a personnel decision as far as a coaching uh, deal. It's very rare. I don't I think I've ever seen it where the actual coach is there at the board of trustees meeting. No, you, the, the coach it, it he can't happen. he can't come to that meeting because the no. the, the board is going to want to ask Dave Hart and the chancellor some questions Absolutely. about the contract. Yeah. And, and they're, you know, in that, you know, they're gonna they're gonna talk about the deal and all that. So here's the question. So Joe, um, what is Joe Dooley's first order of business if you're going to turn around the ECU basketball program and you're Joe Dooley? What is on your mind right now? The very first thing is getting in the locker room, getting all the players together, and getting guys like Sean Williams, Dmitry Spazajevic, uh, KJ Davis, those guys on board, um, and getting them to stay. Because in this culture right now of college basketball, especially in college basketball, there are so many transfers, so many uh, moving parts in that regard that it, it's an easy out for a, a person that may not be – absolutely ecstatic about being in their current situation when there's a coaching change it's easy to say okay i'm going to go ahead and pick up and go somewhere else a guy like sean williams is a guy that you can build a team around he's the american athletic conference uh, freshman of the year i think you the first thing you need to do is meet with your team introduce yourself let them know where you stand and where you see the program going forward and start recruiting your own players that that's that's just my opinion mcgee yeah no i i Billy mentioned three names. I think you start with Davis, Spazievich, and Williams. I think you certainly do all you can to retain those guys, first and foremost. I think you have to consider or talk to, have a conversation with Kentrell Barkley and see if he is – uh, what his plans are, because I think he is a, a... So he's never said he's transferring, and, and he's one of the best players on the team. Correct. But, you know, he had, you know, after after Lebo left the program, he had some attitude, and maybe before that, he had some attitude problems, and he, you might remember his uh, season ended when he got thrown out of a game by an official. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what was... I didn't hear it, but I heard that there was a expletive used at the official. Did you get that on tape, Weaver? Uh, not the audio, no, because it was on the, uh, across the other side of the court. But well, you know, the other thing, too, Joe's exactly got to decide if he wants him. Well, yeah, right. that, that too. And Joe's going to have to do some investigating himself and talking to assistant coaches. That's another thing. He's going to have to decide if there's anybody currently on the staff, maybe Wojcik or somebody that he wants. You know, Michael Perry obviously wanted the head coaching job. Is that a guy you want to keep on staff? Uh, even down to a guy like Kyle Robinson in your uh, – He's your operations, operations guy. guy, and you know he's it kind of ingrained right now in Eastern North Carolina with his son and the autism, you know, Aces Such for a Autism. Good guy. Such a good guy. You would hope that he gets a chance to stay on the staff. So, I mean, as far as what you've got in place right now, you've got to look at your staff and your players first, and then you you branch out from there. You go from in, mm-hmm. inside out. But I mean, you got to know that uh, Joe. One of the things that we know about Joe is that he is, uh, and I remember this about him from before. He's a prolific, hardworking recruiter. Yeah, he already knows where there's some players that he's going to go try to get. Right. Well, and you got to. He's got to figure out who on his staff that he wants to keep. Now, Michael Perry is a great recruiter now. Um, so, is is that a guy that he wants to keep on staff? And does Michael want to stay as an assistant coach? And and with that regard, I mean, uh, Joe's going to have some recruiting. Um, he, he's going to have some inroads in the state of Florida from being down there at Florida Gulf Coast, so that's going to be good for East Carolina, his Kansas connections. And it'll be interesting to see who he brings in as assistants because he's been around for such a long time that he's he's got connections in the coaching ranks. So that that's going to all that stuff's going to take you know a while to, you to know, shake out. And his current staff includes guys that were at NC State, at North Carolina, at Texas. Does he bring those guys with him? But I think what's great about Dooley is that he understands – the struggles that ECU basketball has endured over the years. And I think he knows – I think he's going to make that known. I, I, I know what's been going on. I know they've struggled. And I know what I think I can do to turn things around and, and make that known to your players. I mean, there's going to have to be some patience involved from the fan base, too. He's not going to come in here and win 25 games in year number one. It's just not going to happen. You know, Joe, Joe's probably got a, a solid list of guys. Um, of course, you know, he's, he's got his own staff right now. Right. So, you know, some of those guys might come. And, again, you mentioned the – guys that are on the current staff that could get a look. And then I almost hate to ask this question, but, you know, the the, the name Bobby Lutz just keeps getting thrown around so much. Yeah. 
you know, he was an assistant at NC State and did a great job there. Uh, he got following. fired. He got fired there. Yeah, I, I mean, but he was. <laughs> So, he, so he, got fired, was, he got fired. He got fired at Charlotte too. I mean, the, Lutz, Lutz made no secret how much he wanted the ECU job. Yeah, but would he come to East Carolina as an assistant? And would you want him as an assistant? Well, that's that's. A good I mean, point. after he made such a play to be the head coach and didn't get it. Yeah, I would say no. Yeah, I would say no. I've never mm-hmm. quite understood. You know, and I, you know, I, 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 I actually know him a little bit. Have talked to him several times. We have mutual friends. I, you know, I, I, I admire him, but you know, he went so far as to send a uh, like an hour long video around to people around. You know about this? I did not. He he had a video produced. Now what? And who say, watches the video for an hour? You know what? I actually watched it. You the whole I hour? Actually, I, I did because I watched it a co- when I was exercising. Is it a thirty for thirty documentary? It, it was kind of produced <laughs> like that, and it was it, it, to be honest with you, it was. You know, he's saying that his son produced it for him for his birthday, but I'm telling you, it was really, really well done. Somebody spent a lot of money to get that produced. I find that a bit odd. I'll be honest with you. I've never seen anything like that before. That's but he was. That's how bad I think he wanted this job. He was going after it that hard. So, and I know there were people who were in his court. But I, ne- I here's the thing that always bothers. I never understood why you get fired at Charlotte after winning 19 games. I never understood that. I, yeah. you know, it and was, you know, it was, firing at NC State was never explained. Well, and to tell you the truth, Charlotte hasn't been the same since Lutz was there. Oh, there's no doubt. You yeah, know, Price Charlotte struggled. Charlotte and Cincinnati, I can remember those teams were always battling for Conference USA titles. Yeah. And Charlotte always really handed it to East Carolina. Charlotte was a very good program under Lutz, and they haven't been the same since. Is this the is this the best coaching hire i heard josh graham talking about this yesterday is this the best coaching hire in ecu history now joe was here before and had a win- look if you leave ecu with a winning record yeah yeah back in the uh in, in the mid 90s in the late 80s when he came in if you if you uh actually it's mid 90s he started his first year as head coach he came in with with uh yeah, his came last year Eddie, was 99. Payne, came with Eddie Payne as an assistant Took over coach. for Eddie Payne. Took over for Eddie in 95. He was 17-11 that year, 17-10 the next year, 10-17 and in 97-98, and then 13-14 and in 98-99. I talked about this yesterday. That was the year that Evaldus Josies, he had uh, – seriously, were you here then? Oh, yeah. yeah. One of the best players. I the, loved Evaldus. Might have been the best player ever in ECU history. Uh, he and Blue Edwards I put up there as the top two players. And he broke his foot. Before conference play started. Remember that mm-hmm. year he went down and scored 31 points at South Carolina? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then everybody, oh, my Lord, East Carolina's going to be great this year. They got this one of the best players in the country. He got involved as Joe Cease. And then Joe Cease got hurt and didn't play the rest of the year. He ended up only winning 13 games that year, and Hamrick fired him. And so I was always very distressed over that. I, I, I'm, so that's one of the reasons I'm happy to see Joe coming back. But listen to his record at Florida Gulf Coast. Number one, he's been there five seasons. He's been to postseason play every single year. Mm -hmm. First year there in 2014, went to the NIT. The next year, and by the way, he he won 22 games that year. The next year, he won 22 games and went to the CIT. The next year, he won won 21 games and went to the NCAAs. The next year, he won 26 games. That was last year. And uh, went to the NCAAs. And this year, he won 23 games and um, went to the NIT. So he's, his record in five years at, um, at Florida Gulf Coast, 114 and 58. And finished no worse than second place ever in the Atlantic Sun. His conference record was 57 and 17. Is this the best hire ever in ECU history? I don't, I don't know why you're asking. Is it a be, is it a better hire than the Bill Harrian hire? Bill Harrian was like I don't, coach of the year in the Northeastern. I don't Conference. think it's even a fair question to ask at this point. I mean, why, why are you asking? Is it the we, we, because everybody else is doing it? You don't. I mean, I'm not saying you. I'm just saying. I, I mean, I'm, in I'm just general. saying. You know, in turn, I mean, it, it's not it's not fair to say. Well, he therefore he's going to be this successful here. But I mean, in terms of. A, 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 a guy with prestige and, and that kind of track record, I don't think we've ever hired anybody like that before. No, I don't think so either. But I, I do remember that Bill Harrion, when he came in, he was like 14th on the all-time coaching wins list. Like, he had he had piled up a ton of wins. Um, but, yeah, this could be one of the best. 
I hear the music oh. creeping in. That means Michael thinks it's time to take a break. Weaver, thank you for being here. Sure. Look forward to your report Any, tonight at 6 o'clock anytime. on the uh, outcome. It's going to be the, interesting. Uh, yeah. And, of course, uh, Josh Graham will have more today at 5 o'clock on 94.3 The Game. Josh broke the story yesterday that Joe Dooley is going to be the next head coach at ECU and all should be uh, going down this afternoon at 5 o'clock. We'll be right back. Billy, Billy. It's the Big Zero event at Greenville Toyota. Put zero down on new Toyotas. Corollas, $14,999 or $149 a month. Camrys, $19,999 or $169 a month at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. cellular put towers where most others don't so people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here or catch the game live way over here isn't that what you pay for a stronger signal in the middle of anywhere visit real wireless your local u.s cellular authorized agent in ohoski williamston and windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere Carolina's greatest hits play all day on 1079 WNCT. Don't stop believing how oh, give me all a prayer. All your favorites. With Mark Mark and Laura in the morning. Carolina's greatest hits play here. WNCT. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is the truck dealer in eastern North Carolina. We are overloaded with new Ram trucks and we've discounted every one of them to move. It's a Ram truck month. Get up to $10,500 in total savings on select 2018 Ram 1500 trucks. Or get 0% financing for 72 months when you buy a new Ram. Also lease a new Ram truck right now for only $199 per month. Visit us at WashingtonChrysler.com. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Drive a little to save a lot. We're starting the new year with zero down on every vehicle. It's Greenville Toyota's Big Zero event, where you put zero down and make zero first payment or get 0% financing for 60 months. Plus, get our advantage at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. Talk of the town at, uh, what is it now? It's uh, about uh, seven minutes, six minutes in front of uh, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. God, I'll get it right here in a second. Easy for me to say. Mm -hmm. uh, McGee's got uh, some more sports. Pirates uh, won another baseball game last night on a roll. 21 wins now, McGee. Yeah, 21-6 on the season. They picked up the 21st win last night as they knocked off UNC Wilmington 6-4. to Connor Litton and Jake Washer each hit home runs in the win. Freshman Alec Burleson picked up the win for ECU. They're back in action tonight, hosting Wofford at 6.30. Wofford is... Weather permitting. Weather permitting. Wofford is 29 on the season, wow. and they've won five straight games. And, man, our pitching has been depleted, too. This will be interesting tonight if they can yep. pull this out. Yep. Yeah. Pitt, uh, Pitt Community College uh, edged Lewisburg Tuesday night, 8-7. to seven. Bulldogs improved to 18-9-1 on the season. ECU captures first golf tournament title under... Head coach Andrew Sapp Tuesday with a final round 298 to finish one stroke in front of Georgetown to win the ECU Intercollegiate at Brook Valley Country Club. And, of course, expected news broke on Tuesday that uh, Florida Gulf head coach, Florida Gulf Coast head coach Joe Dooley has verbally agreed to be the next head men's basketball coach at ECU. As we talked about earlier, ECU has announced a special board of trustees meeting today at 5 o'clock. All right, very good. So we'll see. 
We'll have full coverage this afternoon at 5 o'clock. Uh, I'm sure we'll have somebody over at the uh, Board of Trustees meeting this afternoon. Um, Josh Graham will be on the air at 5 on uh, 94.3 The Game. Tom and Sadie will be on the air here. We'll try to get the information to Tom as well. But uh, full coverage of uh, the Joe Dooley announcement. I'm, sh I'm, I'm expecting a press conference probably, what do you think, mid-morning, tomorrow morning? That's what I'm thinking. Uh, and, uh, yeah, 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 or late in the afternoon, and, one of the two. Uh, but there'll be some media comments this afternoon, probably from the chancellor and some of the board of trustees members. So uh, we'll have full coverage on 94.3, the game this afternoon at 5 o'clock, 5 to 7 on 94.3. Actually, 5 to 6.15. I oh, guess. that's right, so 5, five to, to 6, 15, because we'll have – well, unless, again, weather permitting, we got baseball sure. tonight. And the pregame show will start at 6, 15. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, by the way, congratulations to Josh Graham, 94.3 The Game, for breaking that story nationwide. Yeah, a lot yesterday. of people he, picked up that story nationwide. Josh, Josh got 94.3 The Game on, on uh, national media yesterday. Mm -hmm. Hey, by the way, if you went to J.H. Rose, class of 1978, they got their 40th reunion coming up on June 9th. They're going to have it at the old uh, Rose High Building, now Epps Middle School. If you're interested, you should email class of 78 at gmail.com. class of 78 at gmail.com. All right. Bad weather coming, but we'll have some sunshine today, too. See you tomorrow. Let us help you find the right car or truck this spring here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. See ya. Bye, see ya. It's time for tremendous savings during the spring sales event. Lease the 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee for only $249 a month. That's right, a new Jeep Grand Cherokee for only $249 a month. Also, check out the all-new Jeep Wrangler, now in stock. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamson, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. The OptiFast program at the Vitamin Wellness Center is not your typical weight loss program. OptiFast is a safe, professionally supervised meal replacement program combining comprehensive lifestyle changes along with expert counseling and ongoing personalized support. At the end of the 12-week program, I was so happy because I met my goal. I, I lost the 25 pounds that was my target. I dropped two pant sizes. It was simple, shakes, bars, and foods. You do that and the weight starts to come off. The product, it tastes good, it fills you up. So I love that I joined, I love that I met my target. This program is a lifestyle change for me. help you find the right car or truck this spring here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. See ya. Bye, see ya. It's time for tremendous savings during Ram Truck Month. Get up to 10500 in total savings on select 2018 Ram 1500 trucks. Or get 0% financing for 72 months when you buy a new Ram. Also lease a new Ram truck right now for only $199 per month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville.